yo, I, I want that genie. That that genie up there at the top of that of that cave, yo, is me being consistently profitable because once once I'm already there, I'm just saying in general, once I'm consistently profitable, it's fucking limitless. Like it's scale it's it's all scalable. So I you know, once you know what I'm saying, like you can make the endless amounts of money within your strategy as long as you start to scale up and, and manage your risk on the way up. So it's it's actually endless once you get your shit together. First of all, like what which one is your, your best your your favorite um I guess index to to trade? Do you do only Forex thing, at only, all or you just do NASDAQ? I only trade NASDAQ, thank you. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. You don't do ES. You don't do gold. You don't do. No, I'm nope. scared of gold. I'm scared of gold. Fuck that. Well, it's been it's been, definitely been a roller coaster recently, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be honest, yo. No, I don't like gold, but uh, yeah, I like. I, only thing I trade is uh, Nasdaq, NQ, uh, futures. That's all I do. I trade futures. That's it. NQ. Where do you think the market is going right now? Like right currently, uh, shit, it should be. Close. No, I mean, like, like, do you see? Do you expect to see it hit a certain level before it's a reversal? Oh yeah, upside. yeah, yeah. I don't think we're done yet. I think uh, somebody called me crazy the other day, and then and then he's like, "That's impossible." And I was like, "Okay." And the shit went up and then dropped almost four thousand points, you know, from where I said. And I'm like, you know, like you know, I, you know, I definitely think this is possible. But uh, we did hit that area yesterday, um, around twelve one, twelve thousand one twenty. We got in there yesterday. I think we're going to touch it a little deeper and then run, but you know. That remains to be seen, obviously, but yeah, um, I'm not big on I'm not big on uh, knowing exactly where shit is. I just I'm big on ranges and reading tape. I don't really do a lot of patterns on the chart. I don't I don't do any of that shit anymore. Like that that's not uh, that a lot of that is a lot of that just don't work. It's just a lot of for me at least. Because we talked about um, indicators, and you say you don't knock anybody having a bunch of indicators yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Do you? Yeah. I mean, I looked at your charts; they're pretty naked. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they just got. They just got. Um, I think like, I don't know. What do you call them? What do you call them? Do you call them order blocks? Do you call them um, yeah, so, demand so and supply zones? Used, what do you call I, them? I used to do that. Like, I don't. I don't do any like order blocks and fair. But I don't do any of that anymore. Um, like I said, I don't. I don't trade any patterns or any of that stuff on the chart. What I'm looking for is areas where price could reverse at based off of ranges, based based off of previous day highs or lows, things like that. I'm not getting too deep into my strategy, but yeah, that's the, that was one of the main things that I'm doing. And then, um, and then I'm reading the tape. I want to see if there's players involved in these areas where I think that they could be at. And then you know I'm looking at the volume being traded during those times doing that certain market and then I'm looking at session direction because each each session uh, does different things. So uh, New York session, I want to see if there's a reversal session type of market environment or it's going to be a directional environment. So um, after figuring out those things, then we can hammer our setups with confidence after seeing it on the tape. We got to make sure that the tape uh, shows, love you babe, we got to make sure that the tape shows that, that that's going that what I'm seeing on the chart is actually you know is actually going to possibly do what I wanted to do. So yeah, we, we, there's a lot of different things that I do, uh, but I want to make sure that the players are there. Like you know, there's a lot of times where I'm, I'm trading certain strategies. No knock to no strategy, so I'm not hating on nobody doing the supply and demand, support and resistance, smart money, retail patterns. I don't care what you're doing because I do a lot of different things, but a lot of times. The chart, a lot of the times, y'all, the chart is not going to show you where the players are. It's just not on a consistent basis. It just ain't. And uh, um, the tape does. The tape shows me that, hey, look, there is a, a lot of unusual volume here. And I don't mean volume like the indicator volume. I'm talking about there's a lot of buying and selling going on in this specific area. So if that area matches what I like to look for technically on the chart, then i then I will, you know, uh, look for an entry to scalp. And, you know, it's been great. Like, I've been hitting 100-point trades, 90 point, 150 point. I've never been able to do that. Like, when I when I get into a trade now, I don't even look at the chart anymore. I'm just reading the tape. 
that is what's telling me to, where to get in and get out at. And it's been amazing. Uh, you're the one who told me about the tape. It's an additional, uh, uh, would you call it an indicator? It's yeah, not yeah, it's really, an indicator. It's I mean, an indicator, man. I, I, it's, it's a definite, it's, it's, it's definite indicator. And um, it's, it's just, uh, it's so powerful, man, because, and a lot of guys will say, well, don't use it because, you know, it's, uh, they fake you out. Or listen, I'm not here to sell you or nothing. You can, if you, if whatever you're doing, the people that are listening out there, if it's working for you, if it, you know at the end of the day, if what you're doing is working for you. If it's working for you, then keep doing what you're doing. Okay? So, you know, but for me personally, I feel like if I'm trading without the tape, it's like driving a Ferrari with no seatbelt. You know, I feel like, you know, you, when you crash, you're going to feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, I just feel like the tape is a game changer. And I threw that shit away. I learned it years ago. But because of the platform, the company I was trading with, screwed me over with my money, I just threw the whole thing away, not realizing that, you know, that stuff was, the tape that I learned was important. So I brought that back to what I'm doing now. And it's, man, I'm telling you, man, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. But it's not easy. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit? Like, how would you use a tape? So, because like me, you told me about it. Um, I pull it up and I legit, I think it, I spent at least 12 hours, not on, a, on the same day, but it took me yeah. about 12 hours in total until it just all of a sudden registered. And I was like, oh, I see what he's talking about. It's struggling right here. They're buying right here. I know it can go from here to here for sure before it starts struggling. Yeah. Um, but is there is there a way that's a little bit easier instead of just sitting there staring at it? Like, is there, like how would you learn? Well, I think, I think what's really important for traders is that they realize who they are. Because, so, you know, if you like to scout, if you like to do, you know, intraday scalping, low time frame, you want to get in and get out, I think the tape is huge for that. Now, there's guys that do swing trading and they use the tape. But, if, you know, me, like personally me, I like making quick decisions. I listened to this one psychologist, that trader psychologist, and he said that, which was really odd. I didn't know this, but he was like, yeah, um, a lot of guys that think a little slower, that like more fundamentals, that like they're more into like long-term investing. Yes. Know, swing trading. Yeah. And yeah, he said yeah. the other guys that are good with video games and like to move real fast and do in and out stuff, they're more lower time frame guys. I was like, oh shit. I used to, years ago, Battlefield 3, back in the day, I I got 97,000, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got 97,000 kills with a shotgun, bro. Like, I was number one in the world, running, just running and gunning. I, I love that shit. And I was like, and when he said that, it blew my mind. I'm like, yo, maybe there is something here. So I like the quick decision making, doing all these things real fast. But again, training is so personal. You really need to ask yourself what's, what fits you like a glove. So it might not be for everyone. But for me, I think uh, reading the tape is just another layer of information, a huge layer of real information because that's the real print that's really coming in. So we can see I, a lot of information. We can see big players coming in in unusual spaces or places and say, Hey, look, this is an opportunity for me to, to get in with them or squeeze them. You know? So like if, like for instance, let's say there's a, su a support level and price has been bouncing at that support level. If you look on the tape, every time it gets to that level, buyers come in and buy it up at the same price level. They keep pushing up. Every time you look on the chart, it keeps moving 30, 40 points. That's a real area. So then the next time it comes there again, if price actually closes below it, we are now squeezing those buyers, those old buyers. So now I have real confirmation and now I'm looking for something else. And then now we're squeezing the shit out of them and that momentum I'm using to drive it down. So that's what I like. Some things are like similar to that. Like, I try to use them in that in those ways, like. Um, but you can see it on the chart. I mean, I'm sorry on the on the tape. The tape don't lie. Um, it shows a, a lot of. It does do a lot of fake outs on like level two, but level two and time and sales is um, for me. It's a real, it's a real game changer for me. But I, like again, it's it depends on what you're into. If that's something that you're just like, man, that's just too much. I rather really do swing trading or intraday swing trading. You know, I rather trade midday or, or when things are a little slower. You know, but if you're trying to scalp and you're trying to hit a few points here or there, and you, you know, you're doing it with a lot of movement on the chart, you know, 
certain high volume times, like like nine thirty to eleven. You know, I recommend trying to learn to tape, but it's not you don't you know it's not for everybody. Yeah, and you're the first person I know that really talks about it um, openly. Now everyone's talking about it. So um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to do like that, this. man. Like I just yo, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I love the game. So if I see something, I'm like yo, man, like I'll, I'll bring it up. And a lot of guys, a lot of times you get a lot of backlash. I think it's because a lot of guys don't want to learn something else. They're like, man, shit, I got to do something else. Man, I got to go spend another six months doing this. You know, or it's the fact that, oh, dude, this, you know, it, you know, this is all I need. Okay, stay in your little box, bro. But at the end of the day, you know how much money you're really making. You know, you know, it, can your family depend on this? So if, you're, if life is good, then keep doing you. But for me, I'm never going to stay in a box, especially when it comes to trading. I'm always going to leave that door open to see if there's other things that I can learn as a track and because the market's forever changing, you know what I'm saying? It's always it's always evolving, and and, uh, and it can handle everything. It's been around for over 20 years, so I I want to make sure that I'm in the best position. And you got to remember, technical analysis just came around 20, 30 something years ago. You know, 30, 40 years ago, guys were reading the tape. That's it, and and that's what they were doing to make money. I really y'all call me crazy. And that's okay, because crazy is I got me two houses, a few cars. So I don't mind if you call me crazy. So it's okay, call me crazy. But I, I do think that I think that the chart is designed to confuse us. I, that's just me though. That's just what I think. Mm. Do you believe in any other candlestick movement stuff? Yeah, I think it's I, I man, I there's been times where I got out of trades because the candle on the chart was like it's going to reverse. And the and the tape said stay in. And sure enough. It kept going my way, and I, I missed out on another 50 points. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. So I told you earlier, I actually don't even look at the chart. I actually put a sheet up, or I hit the little button to minimize the screen. I don't even want to look at the chart. When I'm in the trade, I don't want to look at the chart. I'm over <laughs> at level, my little level two on the left. Yo, you, you want to know what actually made me, uh, what actually clicked with me when it came to the tape? It was at my job. I traded my job, all right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, people know I re recently went to a nine to five, but part of the stipulation was I could bring my laptop in. Anyways, they have us back in the fucking office. Um, so I had my laptop there and everything was fine. But at one day my charts just weren't working anymore. Like the charts, mm -hmm. it wasn't working. Everything else would work. Like I literally, I got in a trade and I was like, why, why is the candle not moving? Like what's going on? And it was just, just blank. But then the, the tape was still moving. Getting busy. And, and, yeah. And, and my, and my money was going up, but I was like, this, this, <laughs> let, me, let me get out. I, yo, I exited that trade real quick because I was like, I don't, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know anything. But then that whole day, all I had was um, the, tape. the tape. And what was weird, I don't know what they did. I have no clue. But somehow they they cut off something with Ninja Trader where the charts just don't work. So that's wow. when I had to I pull up the tape and I was just sitting there and I opened up my sim and I was like, let me see if if I'm right about this. Buy. And I was like, all right. It looks like the sellers are coming in and sell. And I actually made a shit ton of money on Sim, of course. But I was like, wow, like that's when I realized it's like this is starting to click. Cause I was like, worst case scenario, I don't need the charts. I just need to yeah, take. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of guys didn't use them back in the day. Now, I, I think there's still, no, this still can be an advantage with them because you can look at where things are consolidating or where things are expanding. And you can see certain levels and say, okay, I'm, I like this level. I like how this looks on the chart. Let me look over here to tape and see if, if the players are involved in that area. And then that makes you more disciplined. So now you're like, and I, there's been times now where I see a setup on the chart, I'm like, ooh, I would have I would have gotten in there. And then it, now that I look at the tape and the players there, and they're not there, and then it reverses. I'm like, oh, I would have lost. Like, I can see it now. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I I minimize that. The only time I lose really, like, is, is if there's a slight spike or something and, and then it comes right back down that level. The stop hunters? Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like we'll take a little shot. We'll take we'll take this trade once or twice, and then and then boom, it works, and, and life is good, man. So like I don't, I, I found myself being extreme. And another thing too, my older strategy, I would miss entries, um, price be taken off without me. Just it was you know, I don't miss trades. I'm always in something. Like I, I love what I built, and I think I said back to what I said earlier. You know, everything shouldn't be for sale. I think, you know, you bust your ass, you learn something, you know, this, you know, I'm going to build off of this and become a multimillionaire because of it. And I, I don't, that's why I don't care about selling the dream or selling something to somebody. You know, I don't, you know, it's just not what I want to do. Yeah. Plus, if you're selling a course, now you're indebted to people, right? 
so you, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're indebted to actually having to reply to folks and, yeah, and interact with them. Your, your curve stops. Like you, you got to focus on them. They're they're paying you, and then also then you got those guys that are like, I've been in, I've done that before where I like tried to start a room or I was a, a mod somewhere or I had a little small room with thirty something people in it. It's just not fun for me, bro. Like I don't. It's not something I want to do because. You know, some people always say they act like they're entitled now. Like, you owe them something. Like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a person, I'm going to give you my all. You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to sell, if I'm going to do something for you and you pay me, I'm going to give you everything I got. You know what I'm saying? But then that's going to take away from you. It, it will. Yeah, yeah, it definitely yeah, will. Yeah, because I have a little group and it started off pretty strong. I wouldn't say group. It's just a bunch of my friends. It was like 26 of us or something. We call yeah. each other dumbasses. Uh, you know, because trading with dummy, dumbasses. But yeah. it, it, ha it has fallen off after a while, especially during a bearish market, because I just don't have time to really go in there constantly and just interact with people. I'm more focused on trying to make sure that I'm consistent yeah. versus trying yeah, to, yeah. you know, That's always have fact. conversations and chit-chat and bullshit with friends and stuff. So um, yeah. I, I definitely I definitely agree with you on, on that. Um, so reading the tape, would you consider that – that's considered basically price action as well, right? Yeah, that's – you know, reading the, the tape, that's the that's the money coming in and out of the market, you know. And so the candle is fluctuating based off of that. So there could be a lot of fake outs and, and a lot of things like that just don't work if I'm just solely looking at the chart. So, yeah, as far as the tape goes, like, that's not the only indicator. Like, I just think that that's, you know, that with the way I look at ranges and the momentum and the and the support port resistance and some of the smart money things I've been mixed in there, all these things I've done, to, you know, and then plus the tape to confirm what I'm seeing. I mean, it's made me a, a crazy consistent um, and not to miss like, and not missing out on big money. Like I, I used to, I used to make, I made good money doing smart money and doing other things I did. Um, but I've also missed out on big money. I've also lost money. I think that this with the tape reading, really like puts me in another space because I can see the real players in the market at real times. Like there might be a, a support level and I'm like, okay. And on the tape, there's a lot of, there's a few people there and then price will get into it and maybe try to break lower, you know, and try to go lower. And then you can see that the players all disappear. Now they're going on the tape. So it'll kind of fake you out. And then later on, they'll start to accumulate some more. And then they're, now they're really there. So now you can see, okay, let me go in and get it now or let it break first underneath all that support and smash through them. And then another technical formation comes just underneath that. Boom. Then we get in with the, with the confirmation on the tape and we make a 40, 50 point move and, you know, I'm done. And I love that. I love what I built. So in your personal opinion, do you think it's, um, it's, not a smart move just to rely on indicators. And what I mean the indicators, not the tape. I'm talking about stuff like the EMA, Bollinger Band, yeah, yeah. Um, like the the 9, 20, 50, whatever, like moving averages, RSI. Do you think those are kind of uh, a bad indicators to solely rely on? Because I feel like, so just my personal opinion, I think price yeah. action is, is everything because you actually see, to me, that's a forward-thinking indicator versus everything else is delayed because the shit is not in yeah. real time it's always delayed rsi may show oversold but buyers already came in and by the time you enter it actually may be overbought right so i think i think that um a lot of you know a lot of the community i'm from like smart money community they'll tease guys and say oh they're stupid for indicators i think certain indicators are very powerful and i think it's i think it's ignorant to say that trading is easy or to say that one one form of trading is is stupid and we're smart. A lot of those guys that say that we're better don't even show proof of what they're doing. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, such an, it's, an, <laughs> it's, an, it's an embarrassment. And it's like, yo, bro, you talking shit about another community, but you don't even show long-term results that are legit. So, but as far as the indicators go, they are lagging behind price action. That That is correct. But um, I think that with the right system, with tape reading, I think that that shit can be an absolute gem. You put like a, you put Arval or you put like a, no, I'm sorry. You put like a, a VWAP in there, you know, with a few like moving averages. You know, I think that, I, I think it'll work. I think what really works is uh, 
you know, the volume being in at a certain amount of time to push those, those indicators in one direction. I think the market environment has to be in a certain way. You know, if you have a directional uh, environment where, in other words, for the next hour or two during this session, the market's going in one direction, then everything works because it's going in that direction. You know what I'm saying? When you have these reversals on the reversal days, those environments can probably get a lot of guys that are looking for those directional with their indicators probably get them killed. So it's important to learn the range or to learn the market environment, you know what I'm saying, of that'll help you stay out of hot water. And then also the tape, make sure that the tape is supporting it. You know, so I think all those things put together can make you can can help. But just saying one indicator, you know, or you know, I don't I don't I think you might need more than that personally. Yeah, and I think you need to know the why. When you get in every single trade, like you said, you have studied charts. You look, you know this is going to happen, X, Y, and Z. You and I talk yeah. about it all the time. You have journals yeah. where you're like, I said this was going to happen in this day, and look at it. It yeah, happened, yeah, right? every day. But yeah. you, you, need to know, you need to know why you are getting in this specific trade right. versus just like, oh, well, this indicator hit here and this indicator hit here, so I'm going to execute. To me, the indicators is just confirming – my thesis and the yes. work that I already did. That's it, a fact. It, it hit here. This is a support resistance, supply and demand, whatever. It hit here. And now let me look at my indicators. Yes, everything aligns. So now I have more confidence in getting into that trade and staying in it longer. A lot of people get in and out of trade. I, I, I know I do that. I get in and out of trades quite often. But that's because I still feel like I'm still at baby level. I'm not as confident as I, as I should be. So sometimes I'm like, I'm taking my money. I'm good. 25 right. points is my goal for the day in NASDAQ. It's right. not a lot. A lot of people, I know like you you hit over 100 points. I know a lot of the people that have taught me that specific strategy, they hit over 100 points. I'm okay with 25 points because I'm a baby fish. I'm cool yeah. with that. That's still good yeah. money. But until Absolutely. I build confidence, then I add on the contracts and stuff like that. No, I think I think that uh, you got to start somewhere and you sampling. You you sampling ideas. You want to make like I don't go into the market saying you know what I need to make sure I make twenty points a day, eighty points a day, two hundred points. There's some days like Thursday. Today is what's today Tuesday? Yeah. So mm -hmm. yesterday and Friday, I didn't take I didn't take any trades on Friday. Friday was a great day. I didn't I didn't lose any money. I didn't make any money either. But the market didn't have. The technically wasn't there, and then the tape was weak. So I was like, "Yo, I'm staying out of this shit." That's a fucking win because I, you know, I didn't force anything and lose money, and then spiral out of control. You know what I'm saying? So that's a that's a great day. Then the day before that, I made like 72 or 7800 on Thursday. We had a big drop in the market, and it was a directional uh, session. And I seen things on the tape. I seen my technical analysis. I seen the, my, my pregame setup. Uh, I saw things that all made sense, and I hammered that shit for like 70 points. And it was one of the best trades I've taken. And the same thing today it was a reversal day today. And uh, I got 90, no, I, no, Thursday was 111 points. Today was 70 points. I got a 70 point trade today. It was a great day. I mean, you know, and and uh, so just knowing the, the environment, what we're going to be in, and then seeing the technical analysis. Right, the things I'm looking for on the t on the chart, and then seeing it on the tape. I mean, it just it just makes things uh, uh, less complicated. I won't say simple or easy. To uh, wordplay there, it makes things less yeah. complicated. Yeah, and it, you would say you don't trade every single day. Obviously, I, I'm a that, day trader, the... but no, if it ain't there, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I have a large account. I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not risking my. This is my livelihood. This is how I take care of my family and my team. So I'm not, uh, I'm no, I'm not, I'm not going to trade just because I got a big account. I'm not going to trade just because I got a few hundred K. I'm not doing that. I'm trading when the market presents itself, when the setups are there. And then the, and then the tape confirms that and a few, and a bunch of other things that I do. So that's, that's when I'm involved in the market until then, I'm just going to sit on my hands and, you know, I'm, you know, and I'm, and that's it. You know, that's, that's how I, stay out of trouble and I'm being able to be consistent that way. And the days when things don't go my way, as long as I did what I'm supposed to do, I, I don't be mad about it. I don't spin out of control at all. I don't, I've, I've learned how to not do that. That took a long time, yeah. you know, you know, 
So now, when you get into a trade, though, um, do you yeah. typically have an exit strategy already in place? Like, when do you decide? Yeah, like, hell what, yeah, hell yeah. So when you don't like, hold your game. Because, because, but you just said like you don't go in going for only a specific amount of points, right? right. You go in, yeah. so you go in specifically to hit a certain level and then exit. Like, yeah. when do you determine to get out? Basically, all right. So let's say it's a reversal day. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say this the, the New York session is a reversal day, and let's say in this scenario, uh, after hours, after hours, like meaning like Asian London session that had a certain high. And New York session went above it. And now it's reversing and it's coming back down into the range. Now that range that it's coming back down into, let's say, let's say New York's open is like 170 points away. It went way up, and now New York's open is 170 points away. I'm not looking to exit at the New York's open, right? I'm not looking for that. I'm looking to trade the, the tape. And once the tape says, okay, it's gonna be this is a pullback's coming or uh, or, or there's a this the, the the tape is looking a little weak. Then I'll either move my stop loss, or I'll take some, or I take a few contracts off, or I'm gonna exit all together. But so when you, yeah. hold on, but when, when you yeah. say like the tape is looking weak, right. um, again, so most people who watch this will now pull up the tape and they they may not understand that. I, I don't understand it when you say it's looking weak. What do you mean it looks weak? Because it's just a so, bunch of numbers coming in. Yeah, it's a bunch of numbers coming in a million miles an hour. I love that shit. Like, uh, it's gonna be <laughs> cheesing right now. Like, I just get excited, bro. Like, that shit is, oh my gosh. So, yeah, so when the price is moving in my direction, life is good. I'm reading the, I'm reading the tape. I can see level two. I see that we're coming to a quarter. In other words, we're coming to a, a whole number. Like, we're coming to, let's say we're coming down to, uh, uh 13,100, right? Okay. That's a whole number. That's a round number. Mm -hmm. But there's four of them. It's quarters. So we got we got the thirteen thousand one hundred. We got thirteen thousand one hundred twenty five. Thirteen thousand one hundred fifty. Thirteen thousand twenty five. Yep. Right. Okay. So those four quarters. When we get to those quarters, there's players at each of those areas. People like to put the stop lock, whatever they're doing. So there's a lot of players at those quarters. So I want to see how price is breathing on level two. I want to see if we're pushing through those levels or we're we gonna play around at those levels. So when price gets when level two gets uh, thin, meaning like let's say we're shorting the stock, and I'm seeing a lot of buyers come in, that's good because we're squeezing the shit out of them. But once the buyers go away, that sometimes sometimes that can say, hey, look, it's thinning out, and then it's a couple other things I want to give away, and then boom, price will go the opposite way, and it's time for me to exit or move my stop loss or take a partial. Um, but again, I'm trading during the New York Open. So that's a lot of volume in that time. So I'm, by the time that's done, I'm already up 70, 80 points on that reversal. You know, so that's a great day. That's a great trade. You know, now if there's a directional day, I'm not really looking at the range of the reversals that day because we're in a directional market that, that's during that session. So now we're depending on what happened the day before and the reasons for that day to be a, um, I'm going to give my edge away, but the reasons for that day, I'm thinking that that is a directional day, you know, we might end up moving 300 points that session in that one direction. And I might end up catching 100, 150 of those very comfortably just by reading the tape. And um, and then I'll leave a runner on because I know that that's a, um, um, I know that that's, those certain days are directional days. And on those days are the directional days, I'm working on intraday swing trading. So we'll hold that, that one position a little longer. Do you have a... Do you have like a, a certain uh, ATM strategy that you have set up where you that automatically um, sets up everything for when you first get in and then you just adjust it? Isn't that bad? I need to do that. Bro. I might need to talk to you because I don't even know how to do it. I see it up there. Wait, so, so you go in there naked? Manly doing everything. I manly get in, manly stop loss. I'm doing Hey, I'm, hold on. Let me, let me, no, hold on. I got to put the banner swear, out there. Bro. Hold, hold, hold up. I can say I can bring, matter of fact when we link up. All right, there you go. When, when, we link, when we link up, bro, I will show you. I'll bring my laptop and I because I record all my trades and I'll show you. You'll see me putting in my orders. You'll see me putting in the stop loss manually, doing all that shit. Yeah, and I probably don't even have to do that. I, so there's probably an easier way to do it. I'm just not it, it, it. it is. Yeah, like I have my setup, for example, on on NQ, and this is no cap. So everyone who's like, "Oh, you full of shit," it's not. I have a thirty tick stop loss. Okay. Between 30 and 60. All right. So, so I, as soon as you I, get in I, your, I adjust it. When you mark it in, 
it automatically puts your stop loss 30 points away. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but this is just, it, right? Yeah, yeah, not just it. So I have I have that and I have my profit. So right now I have 100 ticks profit and I have 30 ticks stop loss when I enter okay, and okay. I and I'll adjust it depending on like where I'm at. But this that's automatically where I'm at. Typically I try to stay at 30 because that's my risk. And a lot of people they're like, oh, there's no way you got 30 ticks stop loss on the NQ because you get knocked out very quickly, right? Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing well, and well, if you you your your execution your entry point is off you have to be really precise with it and i don't trade uh at 9 30 because i mean once like if i, I either trade before the open yeah. and then when it gets closer i will get out i don't care how much i'm yeah, up because i will crazy. get out because gets, right yo right yeah and i think um this far, far as stop losses go i mean sometimes my stop loss is like 11 10 points it just depends on what i'm seeing that's allowed me to do that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's a great day when you got an 18, 20, or 15 point stop. That's a great day. So I think today I had one that was like that. I can look where it was like a 21 or 20, or 20 point stop loss. And I, and I got today was a 70 point today, I think it was. Yeah, 70 points today. I got a 70 point move on an 18 point stop loss. Yeah. But, uh, so at the, at the initial, at the beginning of it. But yeah, so. Um, as, as, as far as like you know stop losses go people are like oh you, you can't do that I mean it's, it just depends on how you trade and, and I'm fighting for price on the tape looking for certain areas where where I can see the, the momentum and the players coming in and then that allows me to move with that momentum and it's it's been great man it's been good yeah and your risk is, is different too that's another thing a lot of people got to understand each person's risk is very different right yeah everybody's um, risk is different yeah especially on Nasdaq I would say the more the more room you leave to breathe, the more right you are, it seems like. In, in, in my opinion, like if you have your good setup and you know where the price <laughs> is going to go, but if you let it breathe more, um, yeah. you, you may you may not get stopped out as often. Yeah. I'd rather get stopped out, out early on than later on. So yeah. I could just like, if I get stopped out, cool. It comes right back to my setup. I'll get in. Cool. If it goes against me again, cool. But I know I'm in the right direction. I just have right. to time the... The entry better. Some people say like, well, I know it's not going to go below here, so I'm going to put my stop all the way down here. And if I take right, an L, right. I'll take an L. But mo most of the time, they don't take an L because it's such a wide stop loss and it doesn't really hit their levels because they're good enough to know where it's going to go. Well, um, I mean, that, then that's, your, that's another like thin line, too, because now you got to work on if you got a big 40, 50 point stop loss and you got you put some risk on and that thing goes against you. I mean, you're down now. So, you right, right. So, so it's yeah. a thin line, and you gotta. That's why I'm saying there's no holes in your game. You can't have, you can't have any holes in your game to where, to where you're like, you know, where that can expose you. Because that mo the one time it does, you know, you're fucked, man. What? There's a break in the interview? Yes. I just want to take a moment to thank all of my subscribers and everyone who tuned into this interview. This interview was very important to me. So I'm glad that you guys tuned in. And hopefully, if you're a trader, that you take away some of the gems that SG dropped. But not only that, I also want to do a shameless plug. I have these things called episodes. If you go to my playlist on trading with a dummy and click on the episodes, you can watch those. They're basically skits surrounding the stock market. That's initially how I started my channel off with. But but it didn't get a lot of traction, so I kind of pivoted away from there. But if you guys enjoy that content, definitely let me know in the comments, and I'll start bringing those skits back. It takes a little bit of extra work, uh, but as you guys know, I've been kind of incorporating the skits in my trading group reviews, so I will continue to do that. But if you just want to straight up just skits with my family, let me know. I will bring it back. But definitely check them out, though. I do appreciate it. I put a lot of work in those. So, um, yeah, let's get back to the interview. Yeah, because when I first started, um, like no lie, man. I remember my very first trade and, and this is a warning to everybody who wants to try futures or get into futures for the very first time. I know we said go on YouTube to learn things. That's great. But I followed some random YouTuber who had this random scalp method. I went in there naked. Dude, I've never seen, I never lost $1,400 <laughs> in seconds. So fast in your life. So fast. Dude. And, and it freaked me out. Not only that, like it went in my favor, but I was like, $1,400, stop. I got out. And then it just went in my favor. But I never, uh, that's why I said like, uh, do you get, do you have a stop, like an ATM set up with a stop loss and stuff and you do everything manually? Um, 
but why like after after losing i would say probably about three four grand in nasdaq is yeah. when i realized like it's just too fast for me my stop loss was way too tight at that time it was like 12 ticks it just it wasn't for me until i learned this recent strategy which i posted on my instagram trading with right. by the ways um but why do you just stick to nasdaq versus like es or or ym i don't i don't i mean i'll never rule nothing out i just i've always traded qqq and i did options that's nasdaq you know oh, what I'm saying? okay yeah, yeah I've, I've also traded uh, NAS 100 on indices. That's NASDAQ. So I've always, like, traded NASDAQ. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just um, – and I've always traded – when I did options a lot during, like, earnings season back in the day, I would trade a lot of tech stocks. So I was always watching the NAS. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just I just enjoy NASDAQ. Like, I – you know, back to what you said about losing 1500 you know, and I, I, shit, I've lost – my biggest loss uh, – Lost like seventeen thousand in like three minutes before. <laughs> Yo, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like two, three minutes, move gone. I need, you know uh, what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And it's um, hold on. okay. So it, you know, so like um, and I'm like I'm I'm a nut, man. Like when I <laughs> that was my A plus setup, and it was like the first one was like seven thousand in risk, and I took it, and it didn't work. Then twelve minutes later, I saw my A plus setup again. Still risk about seven eight thousand. I took it. It didn't work. I'm down like 14, 15 k right there. Thirty minutes later, I see another eight plus setup. I took it, and it worked. And I washed a lot of that out. But that's I risky. Knew, like wow. Yeah, like I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I never. And I didn't like. I didn't beat myself up like oh shit. I'm I'm down eight thousand. I didn't even give a shit because I that's I've done the homework. And I was like, look, this is my good setup. This is before I was reading tape. This is not reading tape, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but but still, I believed in it, and it, it, you know, say it made some money for me in the past, and I, you know, I took it, and it just and it happens, man. I was down like seventeen thousand dollars in like six seven minutes before, and then I, and I seen the same setup again, and I still took it again. You know, like I, you know, you gotta have nerves like that. Like that shit don't get to me. Like I don't know yeah. why, but before it would have, I would have just fired out of control and. Sweat, <laughs> heart beating, and all that. I've done that. That happy, like, I never had anxiety until that day when I was like yeah. fourteen hundred down, do, 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 and then uh, yeah, I quit facts. because, like you know, a, a lot of people they put a lot of pressure on themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, for trading, sure. especially like if, like you, you gave me some very wise advice, and I'm going to talk about it in one of my videos, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. Right. But a lot of people put a lot of pressure, an additional pressure, unnecessary pressure on themselves to try to become a trader. Um, without knowing the risks that, that are associated with it so that's a fact bro yeah for yeah. sure but yeah man well as she is with two hours man we almost been almost reached that two hour mark man yo i appreciate it hopefully we could do this sometime again yo i'm a yo. nerd bro so we could talk charts and trading and anytime we read we read the intro we read it yeah we read the intro bro I, you know what i'm saying so. we need to do a podcast one day this has a fun. yeah this, this, is, it, this, is, this anytime, is dope man, you yeah know, i love talking with you man for real Absolutely. So you guys check out SG, a.k.a. Stock God at Trader's Life podcast on Spotify. Is it on Apple as well? Yes, yeah, on Apple. It's, it's on Spotify. It's on Anchor. You know what I'm saying? OK, yeah. yeah. So it's on all Absolutely. of those. Yeah. And you can follow them on Twitter, which is Stock God with uh, two Ds. You're mostly on Twitter, not really on Instagram, mostly on Twitter. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. catch them there um, yelling at other gurus or, or calling people out for the BS. So, yes, sir. Um, but yeah, if y'all want to see and follow some real advice from a real trader who's consistent, that's a key word, y'all. Consistent. You can have one great win in a month and nine losses. That does not matter. Consistency is what matters, especially if you want to do this for a living. So yeah. everybody, thank you for tuning in again. Yo, Eric, thank you so much. I appreciate really you, appreciate you sitting down. So everyone, peace out. See you guys in the next video.